So today I have to uncover the mystery of why this tank got dirty much quicker than usual. Normally I clean this tank about once every four to six weeks, but it was only a couple of weeks ago that I cleaned this tank and we added this crocodile in there and it all looked pretty good about a couple of weeks ago, but it's got super dirty. So the fish are fat, but they're not silly fat. That's the first thing you'd look for to make sure they're not overfed. Making sure the light's not on all the time would be another factor. Now the filter, which was cleaned, is very dirty. And I'll find out what the gravel's like and I'll test the water. See if we can work out. So it seems to mainly be a diatom problem. And so diatom, is usually from silicates in tap water so i'll give that a test as well see what we can uncover and it really needs some catfish but we've tried smaller catfish in this tank before and we've lost them well that's a very fat fish there well he's very fat so we don't want them looking like that guy because that would mean overfeeding but anyway We'll check that out. If you've got kids and you find that your tank is getting super dirty all of a sudden, what's a good little thing is to try hiding the food for a while. Because when a tank gets more dirty than usual, particularly if you haven't added too many new fish, would be if the filter hasn't been cleaned for a while, if the fish are fed too much, or if the lights are left on for too long. So to check one of these variables out, a really easy thing to do, give the food a bit of a hide, make sure that you feed the fish yourself, and then see if the following month means that the food, if there's less food going in, and see if that keeps the tank clean. Because um, a mystery problem can often be kids. Not your kids, but kids. So one thing done differently here is most services, I tend to replace the poly filter. Because polyfilter is like magic for a fish tank. It adsorbs and absorbs waste out of water. But last service I decided not to replace it and just run it again because it wasn't that dirty. But now it is very dirty. So it's starting to go black. So it definitely wants replacing now. So replacing the polyfilter can often achieve the sort of magic that you need to settle this tank up. But once again, I am concerned about a couple of these fish being too fat, though most of them do look okay. Overfeeding is gonna be a major problem, particularly if the lights are left on too long and particularly if I haven't replaced the poly filter because I've decided to not replace it because I thought it would be okay for the next month, which in this case, maybe it wasn't. Now, one thing that will never happen is getting fish keepers to agree which test kits are easy to use and reliable. Everyone has their own opinion on this. So I personally use the JBL ones. I find they're very good. But for one person that swears by this brand, there's someone else that hates that brand. Someone says these ones are really easy to test. Someone else says those ones are a pain in the neck. Other people say these ones are inaccurate. If you actually wanna check for yourself, what it's a good idea is do a full set of water tests with your choice of water tests. Then on the same day with the same water, send away a ICP test to Triton. And that will allow you to get a bit of a gauge on how you're testing the water and how accurate your test results are versus a much more professional, much more reliable ICP test. So I've checked the GH of this tank and it's 14, which I'm pretty happy with. I've checked the KH and it's four, which is a little bit on the low side. I've checked the PH, I'm happy with that. It's about 7.8. I've checked the ammonia, there's none, but there's definitely nitrite in the water. So I've tested the nitrite twice. That's probably a dirty test tube, but that's still too much nitrite in the water. And there's basically no nitrate. So what this points to, is overfeeding considering the fish are fat. I'm going to gravel clean the sand now and find out if that's real dirty, which would also point to overfeeding. 
So I'm just doing the gravel clean and it's certainly dirty, but it's not heaps dirtier than usual. And if the fish were majorly being overfed, I would expect to see dirtier than usual gravel, yet I am concerned about some of the fish being fat. There's certainly crap we're getting out of the gravel, but the signs of overfeeding is not as obvious as may be possible. Now this tank's getting quite a high silicate level, and silicate is what feeds diatom algae. And silicate can be the result just of overfeeding, and it can also be the result of your tap order. So seeing this tank's getting a lot of light brown algae, I'm gonna do a test on the tap water just to see what that's like. But normally this isn't something that would worry me at all. Normally I'd just get some more catfish, but the last couple of Placostomus catfish that we put in this tank um, got beaten up. So we need to get bigger catfish and they haven't been readily available lately. So a couple of Placostomus catfish could be an easy solution for the diatom in this tank. The other thing is that this rock was recently um, put out in the sun, therefore a bit of growth on the fresh rock that has been bleached is also fairly expected. It just came a little bit faster than we hoped and the filter just seemed dirtier than we expected. Okay, so I've just tested the tap water and the silicate level in the tap water is very high and it's exactly the same as the aquarium. So the reason why I got the diatom algae growing like crazy after the water change is the silicate is coming out of the tap water. Once again, this is not a real big problem for the fish. It's just going to look like shit when you grow diatom brown algae everywhere. Getting more catfish is an easy solution and leaving the light off is an easy solution. Keeping the food down is going to help, but um, catfish are going to be the easiest answer. There are various products we can look at that will remove silicate from the water, but it may not be much value for a cichlid tank. The other option is we can start using RO water because the RO water will not contain silicates. One of the secrets that may have had this tank running as well as it has been is fresh polyfilter. So I've just put some fresh polyfilter into the tank now. There's the polyfilter. I've also put some high quality filter wool in there as well just to make sure I'm taking any particles out of the water. See what difference that makes, particularly to the silicates that the polyfilter can potentially help to remove. So this tank has some nitride in the water, which means that either the filter's not keeping up, there's one filter there, and then there's another filter that's in the tank itself. So we just give that a bit of a clean because we need to get the nitrite down and we should have plenty of good bacteria in the system to break the nitrite down because while we have nitrite, we're gonna have all sorts of problems. So we're gonna give this a clean in water from the fish tank. And we're gonna potentially look at either feeding less or potentially getting bigger filtration. The other thing that concerns me as well is how old the food is, which no, doesn't seem too old. Bulk food can be a problem, but no, that doesn't seem to be a problem. Now these magnet cleaners are one of the easiest things you can ever have for keeping your tank clean. But just be aware that if you go get gravel caught up underneath the magnet cleaner, you end up scratching your tank. So particularly if you've got kids, just be aware that this is definitely a risk and you can end up scratching your tank. And if you do have an old scratched up tank, just be aware that cleaning the algae out of the scratches is almost impossible so sometimes if you want to have a beautiful aquarium sometimes if your tank's a bit old sometimes it's just worth getting a new tank just because when you see a beautiful nice new tank especially in something like starfire glass it's just so beautiful and compare it to an old scratched up tank it is what it is so just be careful of magnet cleaners, kids and old tanks, particularly secondhand tanks. Because a lot of people buy secondhand tanks, particularly because they're too impatient for a new one. Because a new tank these days, the tank itself is not usually that expensive. The secondhand ones, sometimes I'm surprised how much people buy them for. And often they're just buying rubbish. 
because sometimes the silicon's too old. If the tank's over 10 years, you definitely wouldn't want to buy it because um, it's going to have a shelf life. One day it's going to let go, particularly with a tank that's been in a certain situation for a long time. If you move it and put it in a slightly different situation, there's no give in the silicon as it gets old and brittle and it can let go. So if you are buying a secondhand tank, just know that you're buying a huge risk. I typically rather not pay for a secondhand tank. And then um, make sure you have a good look at the glass because from a distance, you don't really notice how scratched the glass is until you look really carefully and until you start getting algae growing in the glass. Algae that grows in the scratches of the glass is a pain in the neck. Sometimes a new tank is the key. Now with this tank, we've added plenty of water agent to help to detoxify. And we're not adding any GH because the GH level is already 14. Um, we are gonna add some KH because the KH level is quite low. And we really wanna retest this sooner than later because we wanna slowly bring this KH level up. At the moment, there is some nitride in the water, which is absolutely a concern and we'll, we will definitely want to do a re-service very, very soon. I am hoping the poly filter and reduced feeding is gonna help with that and the big filter cleans because the filters did seem unusually dirty. But if there was ammonia in the water, it's really important we do not raise KH. So you don't ever wanna raise KH if there is ammonia, but in this case, there's just a little bit of nitrite. Now, the next decision we have to make is what to do with cleaning these ornaments. So trying to scrub them is pretty much a waste of time. One option is put them out in the sun because the sun will bleach them. The other option is get more catfish, which in the past, due to this tank being full of cichlids, has been an issue. Um, and then the other option is various rocks you can actually just turn upside down. That can fix that. Or having the lights off for a period of time can often fix it. And this algae is mainly a diatom algae, which is due to silicate. And this tank has high silicates and so has the tap water. So there are various medias that you can put in to get rid of silicates, but that would be um, very unusual action for a cichlid tank. If it was a reef tank, you'd probably want to take that action, but most people wouldn't want to spend money on reducing silicates when normally you could just go and get some catfish or something to be a solution, which would be a cheaper solution. Now, if you do have high silicate in your tap water and you've got tough fish like cichlids, it's hard to justify silicate removers. Um, one thing that you may just have to do is if you can't beat it, you have to join it. So therefore, either if you have white rocks, you can just admit they're not going to stay white. That's one option because nothing stays white in nature because nature because white is a hospital colour, a sterile colour. It's not a natural colour. Something growing on white is expected. Um, otherwise, if you go for brown um, rocks, then you won't even notice the silicon on it if you're having trouble with catfish, because catfish would be the normal solution. Now look out for when your fish grab food and spit it out, because if you do see them grabbing food and spitting it out, make sure that it's good quality food and make sure that the food's not stale. That's another thing to be aware of. Make sure your water quality is good and it, sometimes it doesn't hurt to run a, like a um, parasitic treatment through the water because sometimes when the fish have got various internal parasitic problems, sometimes I'll see the fish do that where they sort of grab the food and spit it out. So if you're seeing them do that with food that they normally eat, then it's good to raise a little bit of alarm and see what you can work out about it. So this tank, the food was put in about Three minutes ago and there's still food floating around which is a concern to me and I have definitely seen the fish grabbing the food and spitting it out again not just the ones that can't fit it in their mouth so maybe running a course of medication wouldn't be a bad idea if we did run a course of like an internal parasite medication whether it be prazzy or something like that we definitely need to take the polyfilter out during that time Now, because this is a reasonably well lit area, trying to have the light off for as long as possible will be a really good way of controlling algae, particularly in this circumstance when we're getting a little bit more algae than we normally would like. So um, having a blackout period, maybe even just not turning the light on for a couple of weeks can often give good results in reducing the algae. But there's always a battle in the aquarium between 
nutrients available to grow algae and nutrients available to um, get broken down by the bacteria in the filter. So if you are finding that you're getting too much algae, increasing your filtration can often be a very good go-to step. All food not eaten. We really want to make sure that every piece of food is eaten in 30 seconds. Otherwise, we end up with excess nutrients. So going for Danichi, nice fresh bag of Danichi and Spectrum's probiotics would be a very good idea. One of the reasons why I'd want the Spectrum's probiotics is that the probiotic bacteria in the food is very good for the fish's digestion. But when the fish poo, the bacteria in the poo eats the poo.